Hello and welcome to our player ratings from West Ham United's game against Newcastle on Saturday night. And here's what we had to say about Declan Rice. Declan, I'm going to give a nine to as well. I thought he was outstanding. <clears throat> Excuse me. If he's um, not his form, if his value was starting to drop, I'll tell you what, he would have done everything then for anyone who might have been a millionaire in thinking, shall we buy somebody else? I think, you know. Whatever, if Arsenal were looking at him and, and still, I think it's that sort of performance that makes you think, oh, well, OK, that's that's brilliant. He just, he stood up. It's like you said, oh, I really liked what you said in the in the review. There were times when you looked at it, particularly when Paqueta was going forward like he was in there on his own. Um, it was amazing. I actually, I actually thought it was it was an amazing performance. I, I can't, I couldn't help but think of when he came through quite early on and he played, we played against Newcastle. And Sean Longstaff was there and, you know, I remember in the comments and all the Newcastle fans, you know, laughing and saying, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't, Declan Rice wouldn't be fit to, to lace Sean Longstaff's boots and stuff like that. And just how he's, he's progressed since then. And just to see him dominating, even though he was outnumbered. Um, and, you know, so many, it's like, like waves crashing on, crashing against the, the, the brick wall, you know, the amount of Newcastle attacks that were thwarted with him and never got to see the back four or the back three or whatever you want to call it. Um, it was amazing. And then just the way he was relief pressure, get the ball, win the ball and then drive forward. He just drive forward 10 metres, drag us up the pitch, relieve the pressure it means they, they then have to re they have to restart. They have to restart. They have to win the ball back. Newcastle and have to restart their attack, but from further back stuff like that gives defenses a really important rest and relieves pressure on the team. I thought it was magnificent. I'm going to give him a 10. I thought it was just perfection. I, I'm pleased now that we've got him back in this sort of defensive midfield role. He's stopped the the runs and stuff. And while they were nice, and at times we will need them again, but in the final third, he's I say ineffective. He's technically our highest chance creator this sure. season in the Premier League. But I think that's more a reflection on the rest of the team than Declan Rice, if anything. Yeah. But. It, Paqueta only works if Declan Rice plays like that. If we don't have Declan Rice in there, I think we get exposed in the middle of the pitch. And at times we were numerically exposed. Yeah. But but Rice, he doesn't even have to make a challenge on that. His positioning is fantastic. And this is something I like stats and stuff, as you know. But I think sometimes they go too far. You cannot measure Declan Rice's importance on Saturday night through statistics for this game. Sure, bring bring me the interceptions and the tackles, bring me that. But what stat? Is yeah. there that exists to, to show attacks slowed down through positioning? There isn't any, it doesn't exist. But that is what Declan Rice was incredible at. Whenever Newcastle stringing passes together, he just read the play before they read the play, which is one step ahead of the game. He was in the right place at the right time, slowed it down, let and, and sometimes it was flipping Antonio getting back to cover, let them get back into position. And then it was a case of now we press, now we're all in position. Now we press, but while the user out, I'm going to step back and I'm not committing because if I commit myself, he's going to pass to him and he's in acres of space. I'm just going to stand here in the way, make the pass if you want, but he can't do anything with it. He's just going to give it back to you. He was exceptional. His positioning and reading of the play was unbelievable. And he's got a lot of plaudits from Newcastle fans off the back of that. And deservedly so. I've seen some people saying last season, they say basically saying, you know, in the last two seasons, Sometimes a player will turn up and it'll be man a match. But to do it two seasons on the bounce at St. James's Park is doesn't happen very yeah. often. But they said Declan Rice has done it. He's turned up and he's strolled around the pitch like a peacock with his feathers out and stuff. They said that mm. is a world class player. Well, that, they'll, they'll be looking at him now, you know, if they yeah, were. Yeah, of course they will. Well, Eddie yeah. Howe was praising him as well. Said so um, you couldn't, what did you say? You couldn't ignore his presence or something like that. Um, of course they will. Of course they'll be looking at Declan and thinking, well, that trip here needs replaced eventually. Not just a right back, but in terms of the captain, they need somebody that's going to come in and take that armband. And the, some, some might. That was a performance of leadership. There's been a lot of question marks over Declan Rice's captaincy this season because things have been haven't been going so well. And it's been a case of, well, is he the right captain? Well, actually, that performance on Saturday was. A display of leadership from Declan. Yeah. I thought he was incredible. Uh, ten out of ten. Couldn't have really done anything more. Paqueta. Now I've got my player ratings book here, and myself and Geo get together after every single West Ham match over on our Patreon video channel, and we record and appraise 
every single player. You're getting a little snippet now. We're giving you five of them from the Newcastle game. But if you want to see more and you want to see it on every single game, then you need to head over to our Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. Uh, eight out of ten. Really pleased with this. Really pleased with what I saw uh, from him, really. Uh, it's important for him. David Moyes has spoken about him scoring a weird, weird interview from David Moyes for Rands, where he suddenly realised uh, what position he played in. Um, so I, I I was really pleased with that because David Moyes has alluded to the fact he wants to see more goals from him. So that would have been really good for him, not, not just in terms of the player himself, but in terms of the manager and everything else, but to feel like he was contributing something for the team. And and he, he will have done, as I say, had a double shot, which led to the corner, which I thought was was really good. Um, I thought he really scrapped as well. You know, and there were times, they got some skillful players. Uh, there were um, Newcastle, when there was one point where he was actually in a little duel with St. Maximum. And it was Paqueta that did the fancy footwork and got out of there, which I thought was really nice to see. Um, I, I thought it was a really good performance. You know, that that's somebody... It was significant for me, Gio. It was absolutely significant for the reasons that I said in the review. That is it. That's the barometer. There's your Premier League. If you can do that, it doesn't get any tougher than that, mate. You know what I mean? That that's it. They're, they're most of them. Most that's as fast paced as it gets. Basically, most of them aren't as fast as that. But it was very, very fast. If he can do it in that, and he absolutely could, he can do it in all all the games. Never mind. Um, whatever, Stoke on a cold Wednesday night and all, all the rest of it, that sort of thing. Um, I thought he was ferocious in there and and I thought he gave us an out, he gave us an outlet and, and he was very much taking up when, so when he was, when we were sort of defending and when he was playing very much centrally alongside, he was taking up the position that he, he takes up for Brazil when we were defending. What I thought was interesting now was he was also starting to take up the position that he takes up for Brazil when we were attacking, which is just he's basically the the right sided midfielder. And then what he would do is he would go in. So when when we start getting up the field, he would take up the position of a right attacking midfielder, which is obviously where he scored his goal from um, in the World Cup for Brazil as well. Very much on that side. So I think this is important. You know, we're we're asking him, but basically when when we don't have the ball, we're saying, Well, you do what you do when you're next to Casemiro. And when we do have the ball, we're also saying, Well, you go into the positions that you were going into with Brazil. We're not asking him to do anything that's alien to him, which is exactly where you want him, because he's left footed. So you want him just to the right of the goal. So if he gets so he can shoot like that and he feels confident to shoot and he can shoot early because he's striking it with his left foot. So uh, um yeah, I mean really, really I mean David Moyes would have been delighted, not just with a goal, but with his attitude. I'll give it eight as well. Hammer 1999 says, made us a point for his celebration. I got a bit of a scare when he did that. You know, when he did oh. his backflip, he didn't, he didn't land it uh, eloquently. He, was like, he bounced, didn't he? I was like, oh, whoa, hang on a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Just do a dance, mate. No, there's no yeah, need. Yeah. Just, just dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've watched you during the World Cup dancing. There was Dance no flips. Just, just do some Dance of that, please. Good, yeah. Thank you. I um, agree. No more flips, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just waiting for him to pull up <laughs> with the lower uh, spine problems in the second half because of that. And um, that landing was, was a landing with a thud. I was very happy with what I saw. I actually agree with Christopher here. We lost a creative edge when he was subbed. Yeah. I still actually understand why he was subbed off. I think the only way you could have kept him on was pushing him up front, essentially, and just said, look, don't come back. We're going to put someone in midfield to sort yeah. that out and you get up there. I understand why he came off. That last good. five minutes, I thought he was absolutely shattered. Yeah. And understandably, so he'd given everything. There was a 50-50 when him and Yolentin both slid in for the ball. They both went in with a slight tackle. Another referee would have blown up for that and then probably given the free kick to Newcastle because of the home team. But the referee let it play. Both of them just got up and got on. I thought, oh, this yeah. is brilliant. This is what I love to see. There was a physical battle on Saturday and fair play to the referee. Because he allowed it. I don't think he's had enough credit for the game, actually. I don't really good. remember anything that um, he did wrong. I thought he, was, he had a really good game. He allowed it to be physical. Both teams were at it. Both teams embraced it. Both teams just got on with it. There was, as, as I already said, there was no diving. There was one, Yolentin. But yep. apart from that, there was no diving. There were some nice tackles on display. I just really enjoyed Saturday's a display of football. And VAR was quick. VAR was yeah, quick. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, it was just a really, really good game. Two committed teams out there. And, and this is where sometimes players go hiding. And Paquette did it. He thought, oh, I'll have a bit of this then. Come on, then. Um, and he's made of hard stuff. 
which is, you know, you know him and Yolent in midfield, two Brazilians, but even I thought it, the way they were going at it with each other as well, with that physical battle in there, that was brilliant. On another day, he probably scores a couple of goals. Like you said, yeah. he had that shot blocked, had another one, went over a corner. He had that one that almost took Shar's head off. Um, yeah. Was that goal bound? It looked like it was on target anyway. But it was just vicious, had a nice bit of power behind it as well. But he just does some of the... Um, it, it does some of the difficult things. The keys. At one point, there was a high ball coming down, and somebody was right behind him. He just plucked it down and hit it first time out to Sufal on the right, on the, with his right foot out to Sufal's space. Sufal went down the line. There was a couple of passes. Came back to Paqueta, and he just clipped it behind Dan Byrne perfectly. Sufal was able to hit it first time with the cross. I thought this is just wonderful football. Yeah. It won't make match of the day because it's not that exciting. There's nothing special. There's no flick or trick. But it was just such elegant football. He's Honestly, he's beautiful at football with the ball. He's just one of those players you just thoroughly enjoy watching. <laughs> anyway, Fabianski, what are you giving him? Uh, Fabianski. Fabianski was... Um, I was frustrating, actually, but it got, got better as the game went on. Started to claim some um, some important balls, if you like. Uh, I, I, don't, I can't really... There weren't, a, there weren't a string of really good saves from him. But I don't think Newcastle had a, a, a ton of chances. But where I, I okay, where, where I think where I found it frustrating was the the hoofing up the field and then it just coming straight back at us. I don't think we needed to do that against Newcastle. I think there's probably a better way to do it. And do you know what? If we are going to hoof it up the field, then give it to a Gerd and let him hoof it up the field or something like that because it was just coming back and it was incredibly frustrating to watch. I think on the plus side, as the game went on, Geo. He was catching a catching crosses and things like that, which you know, not maybe not a Gordon Banks world class class saves, but uh, I, I think it was able to kill a little bit of time. He'd, he'd grab it and he'd sort of fall to the floor, and you know, and we, they, we were able to push up a little bit. And I, I was grateful for that. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna mark him down for the initial one that wasn't a goal because I feel he could have done better there. Um, I'm gonna give him a six. I'm going to give him a six, and I think I'm being generous, actually. I think I'm giving him an extra mark in there because I'm just a little bit cautious. I'm possibly being overly harsh. Um, I, I've watched that go back numerous times. I want to throttle him. I really do. Yeah. First of all, is the goal kick. He decides he's not going to yep. play it short. Up you yes. get, which is fine. But at least let your defence get up and get in position. As soon as the defence turn and start running up the pitch, he belts it. So while that ball's travelling in midair... Kever, Aguerd, Ogbonna are all out of position. They're not in sync. Aguerd is further up the pitch than Kever is. He, he takes off before the other two do. So by the time Newcastle get in the middle of the pitch, they've only just come to a stop. They're not in line. Yes. Fabianski's given them no chance whatsoever. There is no need to kick it then. Just let your defense. If you decided I'm going to go long, let the three of them get up and get into position and then take it. At worst, bear in mind you're a minute into the game. At worst, referee's going to say... Hurry up. Okay, fine, I'll kick it then. There was no need for him to take it like that. Now, he wasn't to know what was going to happen, but it was just unnecessary. And then when Callum Wilson gets played through, his positioning is dreadful. He's just outside the six-yarder in the middle. Callum Wilson's got about 70% of the goal to aim for. It's an easy finish for Callum Wilson because of where Fabianski is. And if it was a one-off, I'd shrug at it. Now, what can he do? Can he come running out to the edge of 18-yarder? Would it make any difference? Maybe not, but at least do something. But this mm. goes back to the Brentford game at home when Da Silva came through and goal. He just stood there on the yeah. edge of the six yard, looking at him. What are you going to do? It gives the striker time to get his head up to have a look. And when the keeper's static, you don't have to worry about what the keeper's doing because you can see what he stood still. It's all oh, brilliant. I've just got to pick where I'm going to put the ball and hope the keeper don't save it. Um, yeah, very, very. The more I watch that go back, the more actually I blame him more than anybody else. And it's incredibly frustrating because he's done these errors previously not that long ago but from then on he was very comfortable didn't have loads to deal with like you said that one's catch you you're referring to was very important though newcastle yeah. had about three players at the back post and only sufal was there and that's when sufal pushed somebody into joe willick and knocked him into the net and caused yes. a little bit of an injury to him and stuff a lot of good about time we had somebody that's just that little bit of naughtiness but it was a fantastic um claim from fabianski so i'm going to give him a six but he really annoyed me when I watched that goal back. If people don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the goal back again and just watch Fabianski when Callum Wilson gets it. He's just static. Now, what are you giving a, a Gerd then? 
a nine out of ten. Everyone's Ooh. talking about him, Gio, as well. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it took a long time with Declan Rice for people to realise how good he was. It's not taking um, hardly any time at all for people to realise how good a Gerd is. Everyone, I'm not talking about West Ham. So outside of West Ham, everyone's talking about him now. Everyone's noticed it. And uh, we've got some player on our hands. <laughs> we've got some player here. Amazing. I, I, I think is. Do you remember last season we were talking, we were saying, you know what? We were saying Bowen is on the same level as Rice. And, and he was last season, let's be yeah, fair. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's amazing. I think we've got another one. I, I really, really do. I think I don't think a defender ever goes for 100 million. And I'm not looking to sell him off. Uh, but he's up there. He, he's an amazing footballer. He's got everything. And you very rarely see them. They've got everything. Normally something, something is missing. Uh, can't see it with him at all. I think it's amazing. I am gobsmacked. Uh, that, that, not, well, not that I've missed him. I mean, it could be... 50 brilliant players in the world I haven't heard of. Do you know what I mean? What I am surprised at is that other bigger clubs had not identified him. I, I, I can't believe for a second he's just rocked up at West Ham and played like that. He must have been playing like that for Morocco. Must have been playing um, like that for Stade Rene. Um, I'm, I'm amazed nobody else has come in from. I think we're very, very lucky to have him. He was he was, he was, was uh, peerless. He was a 9 out of 10. I'm going to give him a 10. I thought he was perfection. Honest, that tackles were two points on its own. It, it was. wins us a point. You know, he's... None of our other d- defenders could have done that tackle. Bonner wouldn't be quick enough to get back. Kerr wouldn't no. have been composed enough to do that tackle. Zuma might have been able to, but uh, good. That was that tackle was unbelievable. Um, he, he's getting a ten for me. He's very much. I tell you what. It, do you know sometimes when people talk about well, how do you know when you say oh this is a good player? Someone will say how many times have you seen him play? Five times. Well, actually, sometimes five times is enough. Yeah. Five times is plenty to see how good a Gerd is. You watch a Gerd for five games, you can see the call, you can see the talent, you can see the quality. You don't need to watch them for 10, 15 games. You no, don't no. need to. Sometimes you only need to see players for a few times to just realise there's a quality player there. Like Matoma for Brighton. I've seen about three games. I thought that is a that's a player with talent. And he's going on to showcase that. A girl's one of those. And I'll tell you what he's done in the last couple of games as well. He's basically Bagsied, the captain's armband next sure. season when Declan Rice goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you watch when he's the one that puts the ball out for the throwing that Newcastle got the Dizzle goal from very first mate, puts it out, he turns around to the players, switch on. Come on. I mean, we conceded a lot of goals from throws and we went on to concede from that throwing, and he yeah, was yeah. partly at fault. He got done by Willick. I think he switched off a little bit because he it like he was confident it's gotten out, but it doesn't mean you can do that though. But that was the only thing he did wrong. His header, he should have done a little bit better at when attacking it. But He's a centre-back. I'm going to judge him on what he does defensively. And he was just sublime. That was perfection, really. You want to, you know, the World Cup is when you've heard of players, but you haven't seen them play. Well, it's not very rare that you watch a West Ham player play for a top and never really seen play. But that was the, the where maybe a lot of people, you speak about how people are talking about Gerd. They would have watched Morocco defensively sure. really good. A Gerd played really well while he was fit. And they would have watched him and oh, who's that? A West Ham centre back. I don't, don't remember seeing him because they hadn't seen him yet in the no, Premier no. League. But I think the World Cup possibly put a gird on a lot of people's radars that just like football, but haven't watched West Ham in the Conference League. And you know, he's stepping up in the Premier League as well. Um, what a talented player, and he'll yes. be as important to, as anyone else in this team in the running. Mr. Ben Rama. I gave him a five. I thought it was was pretty damn poor performance, actually. Uh, and yes, yes, I mean we all often make the case, like you said, and I do it myself, that five is is down is down the middle. Um, but there's a there's a down the middle five. I'm giving you five, but I, and then there's a poor five, and this this is a poor five, really. I there, there was opportunity there. Uh, yes, Trippy is a, a good player. He is, but come on, you know, don't don't. You know, he gives Ramos, you space, though. Yeah. Kevin Trippier going forward gives you space. He, he does, and 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 and, it, and he had that space, Ben Rama. I think that's that's the point. It wasn't like he wasn't able to go. <clears throat> excuse me, he wasn't able to travel anywhere because Trippier's marking was so good, and that you know he, he was free on numerous occasions. It's what he did with that, and it just wasn't good enough. I, the, the shots really annoy me, actually. Uh, well, apart from the ones that go in. Um, because I, they, they need to be stingers. You need to do something. You know what I mean? If you don't score, get a corner from it or something like that. Um, just 
just an, an off game. That's what it was. Ben Rama had an off game in this one. And, uh, you know, know when to drive, when to run, when to shoot, when to pass, when to cross. All of that stuff wasn't there, um, which is which is a shame because, um, you know, I feel we would have seen a little bit more from some of the other players. Uh, so, yeah, I'll give him a five out of ten. I'm going to give him a four. I was very disappointed with him, I think. There was an op- there was plenty of opportunities for him to make a difference. He had um, Jared Bowen didn't really get any. Mikhail Antonio didn't get any. Say Ben Lama did. Now sometimes he made them himself. In fairness to him, that second shot he had, which he dragged really low and wide, which really annoyed Bowen and Dekmash. He made that himself. He picks it up. He runs at the defender. He cuts in, creates the the space for him. So it is sort of self made. But like I said in the review, and I quite liked it. Something to use again often made the wrong decision, but if you're going to do that, you yeah. better justify it. And he, he made the wrong decision, then he had a poor execution of it as well, which makes you incredibly frustrated. Yeah, I think defensively, he switched off on a couple of occasions as well. We didn't get punished for it, but he just looks confused sometimes. And it's not even anything fancy. Newcastle would do two or three passes down the right, and somebody would be in a bit of space to get the cross in. You can almost see Ben Rama looking around like, who am I meant to be marking, by the way? Because there's no one here. They've, they're all over there. Where am I meant to be? And he just he's just unaware of his surroundings from a defensive standpoint. But again, if you're going to be like that, you better make damn well sure you're doing something in the final though to justify that. And on Saturday, he did it. I was really disappointed by him. The second half, he was just anonymous. I don't even remember him doing anything in the second half, good or bad. Very lucky, I think, to have got 75 minutes. I'm not going to mark Moyes down for it because... Can't have it both ways. I criticise Moyes for not giving Ben Rama enough of a chance. I'm not going to sit here and say Moyes gave Ben Rama too much of a chance, but I did think, come the hour mark, I was thinking, well, Moyes takes you off today. You've got nothing to complain about, Sunshine, because your performance is, is not up there with the rest of them. I do think he worked hard, though. When I say that he's out of position defensively and stuff, it's not because he's, he doesn't care or anything. I think it's just because he's not very good at it. He's just not very good at the defensive yeah. side of things. And it's one of those players, you're just never going to teach it. You, you're just not going to be able to teach him how to track his runner or anything. He, it would have been done by now. Moyes will have worked endlessly on that training ground, teaching Saeed Ben Rama how to defend, how to track runners and stuff. It's still not in him. It's never going to be in him. You're just never going to get that out of him. But I was disappointed by Ben Rama. He's had a, two or three quiet games now. It's not great. Um and this is where, you know, we play Chelsea next Saturday. If he's not in the starting 11, I get it. I can't really have much complaints, actually. Moyes decides to drop him after the last couple of games. So I could bet him around my four. So there you go. Five selected players from our player ratings video from the Newcastle player ratings. This is obviously a bit of a marketing video, but you are our target audience. That is our product. So we're giving you a little bit of a sample. If you do fancy supporting the channel, accessing that video for its full length, because we do that discussion for every single player, including and David Moyes as well. The videos tend to be 45 minutes to an hour long after every single match. But if you fancy signing up, you can go to patreon.com forward slash hammers chat. The link's in the description and the pinned comments of this video. We've got three tiers over there. It depends on how much content you want, how much benefits you want, and I guess how much you really like hammers chat. Debatable, isn't it? But if you fancy joining up, thank you to everybody that has done. Thank you to everybody that goes over, checks us out, and even just debates. It means the world to us because it allows us to create content every single day, two videos a day, one on each channel without Patreon. It wouldn't be possible. Anyway, coming up this week, we've got Hammer Lit, it's got Patreon Podcast, got my opposition prediction for the Chelsea game. We've got a Q&A with Jack Collison. We've got our monthly player ratings where we take a look at our, our average ratings between the Arsenal game and the Newcastle game as well. Plenty of content coming up, but if you do check it out, it means well. Thank you.